Hello YouTube, still Warren 86 here with another Arduino video. I recently received my Chinese clone for the Arduino Uno in the mail, and I wanted to share my experience with you all. As you, uh, as you may know from my previous videos, I have a couple Arduino boards. This is my Uno. It is a legitimate Arduino board, and I have thoroughly enjoyed this board. Um, there's nothing wrong with this board except for the price. Um, for $24 and change, $25 plus shipping, um, this is something I didn't want to take to work, take to school, tinker with, you know, crush, break, fry, yada, yada, yada. I do like prototyping with this, but only here at the, at the house, not, you know, out and about. When I have downtime, I like to program. This guy should fill in that gap for five dollars you know four dollars and change and uh free shipping from ebay i was able to get this guy which is 100 percent arduino compatible um and i don't feel like i'm gonna really be hurt breaking this so that was why i purchased this um i would recommend everybody to purchase at least one legitimate arduino to help support the community um, they use that money to develop new products, to develop upgrades, to change things, um, so on and so forth. So it is it is worth buying at least one. Again and again, I have a, a couple of these. So you know that's that is what it is. Um, and once again, price points. This is about twenty five dollars. This was about five, and this came with a USB cable. Um, they are both. Arduino Rev3 versions. You do have the uh, over here. You have the SCL SDA uh, pins. Let me see here. There we go. SCL SDA pins broken out um, uh, on the on the board. That uh, for any of you that don't know what the Rev3 version means, this here also has the SCL SDA pins. Nothing is labeled on the sides, but uh, they are there. Uh, so can you just take my word for it that and that I guess that segues us into the next part what are the differences between the boards as you can see the sides of the GPIO are not labeled like the legitimate Arduino that is a an inconvenience but you know for one-fifth of the price I think I can I can look at the the board labeling as opposed to the sides um, different color you know not made in Italy so on and so forth but that that's all irrelevant that's not none of that's important to me um before I purchased them I did take my Arduino Uno and scour the pictures for the clone very deeply and there were two major things that I found one this resistor here doesn't exist on any of the clones Okay, all the clones were um, consistent with each other and consistently different with the legitimate Arduino. This resistor does not exist on any of the clones. Similarly, this capacitor that ties in with the 5 volt and the ground doesn't exist on any of the clones. So, um, I'm not 100% sure what either one of those do. Um, looking at the schematics, this capacitor, I want to say, is a decoupling capacitor. Um, for any of you that don't know what that is, essentially it evens out voltage output, which would make sense for why it's tied into 5 volt and ground. Um, and if that's the case, I'm not too worried about missing it. Um, I'm not doing anything that's going to require a perfectly even 5 volt output. Um, not at this level anyway this resistor I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure what that is um, and if anybody does know please feel free to chime in I would love to learn and even if I'm wrong about this capacitor please feel free to chime in don't be an asshole just you know tell me what it is I mean, if I I love conversation and you know I'll, I'll converse all day long but if you're an asshole to me I'll be an asshole to you here you can see that that resistor on the clone is gone, and the five volt, or the the 
my what I what I'm going to continue to call a decoupling capacitor is not there. Other than that, everything else component-wise seems to be the same. The polyfuse here, as you can tell, is green and silver as opposed to the black and gold that are on on legitimate Arduino boards. Um, that doesn't really matter to me as long as it works. I don't care what color it is. And for those of you who don't know what a what a what a polyfuse is, um, when you connect your computer to the USB. Everything on the board powers up, things start working, things start doing what they need to do. If you wire something incorrectly, or you code something incorrectly, or you, you just you screw something up, it can send a voltage back to your computer through the USB, and essentially that could harm your motherboard. It could fry your motherboard, hurt things, damage components. The Polyfuse keeps that current, that voltage back, keeps it from going back into the computer, keeps it in here. Which is nice. So again, I don't I don't really care if it's green and silver or black and gold or blue and purple or pink and green, as long as it works. So those those are the major differences I've seen between the two boards. Um, since we're here, the, I kind of want to go over the packaging and the unboxing because that kind of brings me into the next difference I've seen between the boards. As you know, the legitimate Arduino boards come in an Arduino box, and it comes with paperwork and stickers inside. Very nice. It's it's actually enjoyable to open this. It's it's nice. The clone, on the other hand, came with an eBay rate us and a an anti-static baggie. That was it. It was in a in a, in an Manila envelope that was mailed, you know, USPS. And that had some bubble wrap in it, but this is it. This, I mean, it wasn't as enjoyable as opening the legit, le the legitimate Arduino. Um, but for some of you, that may be a moot point. Um, the reason I went into that is because, as you can tell here, all the soldering jobs, all, all the soldering points are nice and clean. All the pins are vertical and parallel. Everything looks great. And I, it, I guess it ought to for the price you're paying. Everything is done very well. It's all done by a machine, but it's, it's still very pretty, very nice. Everything is correct. When I get down to the clone, let me get my pointer here. You can see here, one's been broken off. It's just gone. It's broken. If I turn it over this way, you can see that this guy's bent right here. There's another bent one here. Um, this, this one here is bent. I don't know if that's focusing or not. That Yeah, that one right there is bent. There are bent pins down here. Um, I guess that's not a huge deal as long as they work, but... You know, being in a baggie, you can see there's a there's a good view. You can see the bent ones and the not bent ones. They're not in the same direction. They're kind of they're doing their own thing. And then that one in the very back in the middle is uh, just broken clean off. It's I don't know, but again, four dollars compared to twenty four dollars. So I mean, you're you're gonna have to make some sacrifices somewhere, I guess. So. I mean that's as as again as long as it works you can some of the pins can be bent or broken that's that's fine with me um so I guess that once again segues us into the next step to see if they work to do that I'm going to use this if you've seen my previous videos uh this may look familiar this is my randomized LED breadboard um ignore the 555 timer it's not actually tied into anything as you can see it's just there from a previous project. I just didn't feel like taking it off. Um, essentially, the, the, this board was designed to um, read the photoresistor and start blinking the LEDs at random times. They start at random times and they blink at or they fade in and out at random rates. And then when the photoresistor gets light again, they all turn off, re-randomize, yada yada yada. So. We're going to use this to determine if the clone works. And to do that, we're going to start with, let me get over here. We're going to start with the legitimate Arduino. Let's set this aside. We will plug everything in. LED is going to pulse width management. 
pins. The analog read goes into A naught. Ground goes into ground. And then 5 volt output goes into 5 volts. Let's make sure I've got all that correct. Ground, PWM pins. Cool. We will go ahead and hook this up via USB. And we will upload the sketch. Doop doo. Gives it a second. Lights are flashing. Everything is transferred. So we'll go ahead and darken the photoresistor. And everything starts flashing. Good. So now we know that the circuitry works. We know that the code works. And that means that when I take this off, everything turns off, re randomizes. They stagger on. Good. So everything works the circuitry and the code so let's go ahead and remove this device and exchange it for the clone to make sure that the clone works uh, once again these go into pulse with management pins three five six and nine I can tell you that I do miss those being labeled on the uh, the sides but can't have everything can you can't eat your cake and have it too the reading line goes into a knot and then this goes into a five volt source right that's connected to the computer all the lights turn on. Let's go ahead and upload. Well, it reads it as a different COM port. I wonder why that is. Maybe there's something to do with the uh, the 8U chip. 8U chip. I don't know. Hopefully it uploads. Lights flash, transfer. It looks like it uploaded. The program tells me it did. Now for the moment of truth. Let's see if the uh, if everything works. Give it some darkness. The lights seem to stagger on and fade in and out at random rates. Take it off. Everything stops, re-randomizes, and then they stagger on at random rates again. Look at that. Okay, everything seems to be uh, be functioning 100%. So that's good. This $4 board seems to be working perfectly. I can't complain about that. Huh. Well. That's, uh, that's surprising. I expected something to not work. But I guess, I guess that's just me being a pessimist instead of a realist. So. $4 board seems to be working. Seems to be working perfectly. Um... There are some minor differences, and there, there I found one major difference that isn't all that great, but, I mean, as long as the board works, I'm fine with that. I do, uh, once again, I, I, I do plan on transporting this all over the place and essentially bending and breaking pieces more than what's already done. It just kind of burns me that it's been done for me before I even open the package, but... That's neither here nor there. Um, it does work. Works perfectly. Again, I would recommend to buy at least one legitimate Arduino. Um, if for anything to support the community. But um, another point that I that I see, if something doesn't work for this, if I, if I code something and try to load it on here and it doesn't work, I can always pull this out to see if it's the board or if it's my code. Um, essentially, if it doesn't work with a legitimate Arduino, it's not going to work. Um, but I would recommend to buy one of these. Uh, I have this Uno. I have a Leonardo. They're both legitimate. They're both perfect. They've never given me any problems. And because of that, I don't want to break them. 
Um, and then I bought this uh, off of eBay for four dollars and change. So uh, hopefully this video helps you determine which kind of Arduino you want to buy if you want to buy a legitimate one or if you want to buy a clone. Um, I would always recommend that you buy at least one legitimate one now that I beat that dead that dead horse to death is that the right terminology I don't know I'm tired um, and with that I'm gonna just go end the video and stop wasting your time we're running on 16 minutes now so thank you for joining me YouTube uh, once again I'm stillborn 86 have a nice day